Should you fast when you're sick or should you feed yourself when you're sick? Well, I'm going to give you some concrete answers by the end of this video, but I'm also going to give you some interesting food for thought depending on whether you have a virus or a bacterial infection. Hey, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, fat loss, and general health channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well, including some live broadcasts. So I want you to hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications. That way you know whenever I go live, so you can hop on those broadcasts, but you also know whenever I post a new video. I also want you to check out Thrive Market down in the link in my description. Thrive Market has some amazing groceries at greatly reduced prices compared to the grocery store delivered right to your doorstep, and I've even created my own keto and fasting custom boxes, so you can check them out down in the description after you've watched this video. So let's get into some interesting fasting science. All right, so the main thing that we actually have to remember is that when we are fasting, we are stressing our bodies out. People forget that. And I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of the stuff that floats around the internet saying how cleansing and detoxing and this and that fasting is. That is true, but it comes at a cost. You see, during the actual period of a fast, we're wreaking some havoc on our body. We're putting ourselves in a very, very, very stressed state, which means that we actually immunosuppress ourselves. We have an immunosuppressive response to fasting at that very specific point in time. You see, we don't actually become stronger while we fast. We become stronger after the fast. It's like we're breaking our bodies down during that fast, getting them exposed to high levels of oxidative stress, high levels of catecholamines, high levels of overall stress, so that they get stronger, so that when we get done with the fast, we have an ultimately stronger body. You see, even autophagy, the process of cellular recycling and cells recycling their old, decrepit parts, that process alone is survival of the fittest. We are getting rid of the weak portions during the fast that we're left with nothing but the best. And then when we feed and thrive those components, they're stronger than ever before. So yes, fasting will make you stronger and will strengthen your immune system. But when you get down to the actual minute that you were in a fast, it might not be a good idea to do that while you're sick simply because it could weaken your immune system. So we have to look at simple things like that. However, there's a whole different world when you look at things like bacterial infections versus viruses. The hard part is you don't always know whether you have a virus or a bacterial infection. A lot of times you won't know until you go to the doctor. And the fact of the matter is, is that when you end up with a virus, a lot of times you'll end up with a secondary bacterial infection. So a good example is you get a cold, okay? You get all the symptoms of a cold, and then you end up with bronchitis, and you end up with this bacterial infection in your lungs. Okay, perfect example of a co-infection or a secondary infection that is bacterial-based, but derived from the virus in the first place. So case in point, it can be difficult. But what's interesting is that studies have shown that you can fight off a virus by feeding the body but you can fight off bacteria by starving the body. You see, one thing that I learned that's blatantly obvious, but it was really intriguing when I actually learned it, is that viruses aren't actually alive. I've seen them described as M&Ms before. They have a hard protein shell, and then all the ooey gooey bad stuff in the middle. Okay, so that M&M or that virus comes into your body, and it needs the forces, it needs the professional forces of the immune system to come in there and break down that shell, neutralize it, and kill that virus. I say kill that virus, but the fact is that virus isn't even alive. That's the interesting thing. Viruses aren't going through the normal life cycle and replication and multiplication phase that like bacteria does. So they require a completely different thing. Whereas bacteria, on the other hand, are organisms. Okay? They multiply, they divide, they go through that, which means that you want to starve them. You don't want to be feeding them. So the old wives' tale of feed a cold, starve a fever, actually makes sense because generally bacteria does elicit a feverish response. So, because it's an infection, right? So it's pretty wild. So if you know for a concrete fact that you have a virus, you should eat through it because that's gonna allow your body to have the defense that it needs to actually break it down. But if you know, again, for a legitimate fact that you have a bacterial infection, it might be best to starve yourself a little bit i.e. fast, because eventually those living organisms are going to need to feed on something, and if you're depriving them of the actual food that's coming in from your diet, then that's going to make it a little bit of a better scenario. Sure, there's still going to be food they can feed off in your body, but sugar, starches, things like that, 
is going to end up feeding that bacteria. In fact, some studies specifically have shown that bacteria end up being glucose dependent. So if you have a fever, sugar might not be something you want to eat at all. If you cut out sugar, you might be good just enough. So here's what also is interesting to back that same matter up. Is studies have shown that gamma interferon increases when you eat. Now, gamma interferon is what actually fights the flu, right? So we need an increase in interferon to fight off the flu. So eating increases interferon, whereas fasting increases interleukin-4, IL-4, which is needed to fight bacterial infections. So what do you know? Okay, feed a cold, starve a fever. It just makes perfect sense. Again, it's hard to know what you actually have going on. Now, some people find it hard to believe that when you're fasting, you actually have this increase in IL-4. IL-4 is indicative of inflammation. So yes, while you are fasting, you are eliciting an inflammatory response on your body at that very specific point in time. Okay, so now I have to play devil's advocate just a little bit here. One thing that we do have to consider is that we have the immune system, which is like the professional forces, right? They're like the special forces. They're the ones that are designed to go in and neutralize pathogens. And then we have the liver cells and we have things like that that actually are sort of a first line of defense. Now, an interesting analogy that I've heard before is like our liver cells and our body's own, its own cells are like internal forces, like the civilian militia. They still have the ability to at least fight off a virus or at least fight off bad bacteria to an extent until the professional forces arrive. So fasting and improving autophagy could actually strengthen liver cells. Because hepatic cells in general are the ones that really get a benefit from the autophagy process of fasting. So if we strengthen the liver cells through fasting, we can fight off a cold a little bit longer so that the professional forces, like the immune cells, like the helper T cells and the killer T cells, arrive. So does that mean that you should fast when you feel like you're getting sick? Well, here's my theory, and it's only that. This is what I've hypothesized. If you feel yourself getting sick, you're usually too far down the path. Once symptoms start to show and you feel run down, it's because the immune system has already been called into action. So don't bother starving it. If you know that other people in your household are sick, or you know that you're around people that are sick, that would be a good time to fast before symptoms ever start to show because then you are strengthening those hepatic cells, you're strengthening that autophagy effect, and you're giving yourself that extra layer of defense, that extra sort of incubation that you need so that the immune cells can actually get primed, ready, put their body armor on, and get to work. Then again, if you know that it's a virus, feed it. If you know it's bacterial, starve it, plain and simple. So I hope this cleared some stuff up. I know it's not super, super concrete, and we have to piece some pieces together here, but at least it gives you something that you can put into action. And it's what I've done personally, and it's worked fairly well for me. Although, just like everybody else, I get sick too. So as always, make sure you're putting it down in the comment section below if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video.